I am sitting along Wet Beaver Creek right here and just downstream that way, maybe half a mile, is a truly amazing place. Uh, this place is a sacred place built by the Sanawa people. And if you had been standing right here where I am today, seven or eight hundred years ago, you almost certainly would have met a Sanawa person because this area here was a hub of activity for Sanawa people. Uh, the very first Spaniard came through the Verdea Valley around 1583. And the name Sanawa actually is the word sin, meaning without, and awa meaning water. It's Sanawa, the people without water. The Sanawa people were fascinating for many, many reasons, but one of the big ones was simply because they weren't nomadic. They built these amazing cliff dwellings and uh, whole communities on top of, you know, peaks and mountains around here that still stand today. As I mentioned, this place just maybe half a mile downstream here. Uh, this is a sacred place. It's called V Bar V. It was a ranch for the last hundred years and recently came into uh, the hands of the National Forest Service and it's now an amazing site. Uh, if you're in the Sedona area, you absolutely have to go there. Uh, it is a petroglyph site, and I was so taken with this place that I wanted to tell you all about it. However, when I was there, I really didn't want to disturb the place by talking a lot. <laughs> so I'm going to try now to tell you a little about it. So this is the V Bar V Heritage Site. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of uh, petroglyphs and stuff right down the trail here. So of course, that's where we're heading. Ah, so beautiful. Right over here, uh, this is uh, Wet Beaver Creek, and you can hear the water running. Just gorgeous. This would have been an amazing place, and I'm really glad that it's now in public hands so that we can all enjoy it. <laughs> The Sanawa Indians lived in this area from about the year 600 to 1400. And there's evidence of uh, terracing in a few of the hillsides here that they would have used for farming. Yeah, uh, the history here is just amazing. It's, <laughs> it's so cool. I'm gonna show you one of the locals hanging out here on the trail. <laughs> I uh, think 
that that's like a gopher snake or a gardener snake. Or I don't believe that's uh, poisonous at all. So pretty, pretty harmless little lady there or feller. <laughs> During that time, yeah. they, they took everything. My name is Jim. I've been doing this for a long time. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. If I can't answer your questions, I'm really going to make them excuse. Okay, folks. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you just came in recently. First of all, yes, I want to say to you, that where you're standing right now uh, is a very sacred place. And I don't use that word casually. This is where the shaman, we believe, practice the religious ceremonies and the rituals. Okay? <clears throat> so this is holy ground right here. Now, they didn't live here. They lived a half a mile this way as the raven flies. A half a mile this way is where their uh, Pueblo was on uh, what we call Sacred Mountain. Okay. So it's the largest Pueblo on the Wet Beaver Creek drainage, much larger than Montezuma Castle or Montezuma Well. Okay. Now what do we have on this wall? First of all, we have clan symbols. Clans are how most Native Americans in the Southwest are socially organized even today. Every clan has a name and every clan has a symbol. And by putting their symbol on the wall, they're saying we were here. Which I think back in the day was a big deal. See these three right up here on the top left? Mm -hmm. This is a symbol for which clan? Snake. Snake. I think that's a bluebird clan and a spider clan. All three of these clans existed at Montezuma Castle and Montezuma um, Well, and also here at our own Pueblo as well. This one right here, this is a symbol for the bear clan. This one right here, uh, a number of them also said they were members of the badger clan. So those are clans uh, here. Um, this right here, we call this waffle gardening. Uh, we see it all around uh, Sacred Mountain. And here's where they would plant their crops, and then they would outline them with stones uh, to help retain the moisture. These people were expert dry farmers. They knew how to make the most of the available rainfall. Irrigation ditches. How many of you have been to Montezuma Well? Mm -hmm arguably built by these people over a thousand years ago and still in use today. Okay, so uh, that would be, in this right here, we think it's a storyline linking chronological events, although we don't know what that story is. And we have a world-class solar calendar on this wall. But only the people who put these images on the wall really know for sure why they're here and what they made. When the last Native American turned off the lights and left this site no later than 1400 A.D., there is no evidence of any Sanawa in the Verde Valley after 1400 A.D. When they turned off the lights, they essentially took the knowledge of this wall with them, never to be truly discovered again. There are easily over a thousand petroglyphs covering the walls at V Bar V, and they believe the petroglyphs were created with a sharpened piece of bone placed up against the rock and then the end of the bone tapped with a rock or a piece of wood. And if you look very closely at some of the petroglyphs, you can see the little peck marks that create the image. While it might look to many people as though the petroglyphs are placed rather haphazardly, they're almost certainly was a method to their placement. And this is nowhere more evident than the incredible solar calendar that was placed here. The main panel of petroglyphs is a sheer wall running almost exactly north-south. So when the sun rises to shine directly over the top, two shadow stones cast shadows. The shadow lines and the light in between illuminate the petroglyph signs. There are 14 known signs on the solar calendar at this time. The two shadow stones are natural. However, the Sanawa did stabilize the stones by jamming smaller rocks in as shims so that they wouldn't move. 
For a very brief moment every day, when the sun is directly overhead, the stones cast a shadow that illuminates specific signs. These signs mark the solstices and equinoxes. They also tell when to plant and harvest the crops and when the summer rains are expected. One of the key elements of the solar calendar is this zigzag line. When the shafts of light hit the points on the line, it corresponds with significant events. The end of the line is a spiral and is believed to indicate when the summer monsoon rains are expected. Other significant elements are this spiral, which marks the summer solstice. These lines with slashes through them are symbols for maize or corn. It's believed these indicate when to plant and harvest crops. The images on the wall go all the way down to the ground. This is because there has been about six feet of buildup at the foot of the wall in the last 700 years. Currently, the highest images are seven to eight feet high. But during the time the Sanawa lived and worshiped here, the highest images would have been 13 to 14 feet high. There has been an archeological dig here with the approval of the local Native Americans, which is marked by these black plastic outlines. The dig next to the wall revealed many more images below the current ground level. So the number of images here could be in excess of 2,000. Leaving the current ground level where it is preserves the images below. In fact, you can see a portion of the wall is a much lighter color, which occurred from cows rubbing themselves against the wall when this was a ranch. The owners attempted to stop this by planting a row of trees directly in front of the panel and wrapping barbed wire from tree to tree. The first day I came to V Bar V, I waited patiently for over two hours to see the solar calendar in action. However, it was overcast and no shadows were to be seen. So I returned the very next day just to get the chance to witness this amazing piece of history and culture. Later in the evening, my friend Ran and I decided to climb up Sacred Mountain, the home of these people, to watch the sunset.
sacred mountain was home to many of the Sanawa people who worshipped at Bar V. The ruins of a 50 to 60 room pueblo is evident at the top. The basin surrounding the mesa was a complex agricultural site with many canals and short rock walls creating the waffle gardens. Pottery shards are strewn all over. Normally, I would never disturb any ruins. However, since there was already several pieces set on a rock, I couldn't help myself. I honestly couldn't stop thinking about all the people who once lived here. Being in a place where history is literally strewn about your feet is a rare experience. Wondering what another person's life would have been like is the most human of experiences. What everyday chores they may have done, bringing water up in the morning, or just walking down the mesa to work in the fields, the sunrises and sunsets they watched. It truly is a sacred site.